Hey YouTube, Joe Boy here. So, Logias are hyped up throughout the story, but in my opinion, it's the mythical zone which is actually the strongest. And when it comes time to reach the final battle and we get to Luffy's in-game opponents, I expect them to not have Logias, I expect them to have mythical zones. So this takes us to the last chapter of One Piece where we see Emu talking to Cobra. And in this chapter, Emu and the Gorosei sort of reveal their powers. I say sort of because it's unclear. Uh, they're all in shadow. And some people have speculated that the shadow is, we're actually seeing the powers. Uh, but my particular opinion is that it's, it's just silhouettes. And Oda's saving the reveals of what's going to look more solid for when these characters fight. And I suppose the main reason for this belief, among many others, is that we see both the Gorosei and Emu, uh, their powers in shadows, which means that it's all one power. So that's what people are saying is that the Gorosei are being transformed by Emu's power, but I just want the Gorosei to have their own powers. Like, just give them their own powers. Why wouldn't you do that? But anyway, based on these silhouettes, you see what appears to be a lot of creatures, which is precisely what I would expect from in-game opponents. Mythical zones. All of them. The world government has had access to and been hoarding devil fruits for 800 years. The Gorosei, the very top members of the world government, given the very best devil fruits that they know of, minus Luffy's fruit, which they can't seem to possess because of its inherent will, makes a lot of sense. I want to talk about Emu's fruit. What exactly is it? So if you guys recall, I did a video about god fruits a few months ago, and in that video, we mainly talked about Luffy's fruit being the sun god Nika, and a foil counterpart fruit being essentially the moon god fruit, which is in the possession of Blackbeard. Blackbeard's Yami Yami no Mi, just like Luffy's fruit, is misclassified, and he also secretly possesses a mythical zone. Which is just like ridiculously cool, so even if you don't believe it, you kind of gotta want that to happen, right? It just would be awesome. Everybody agrees, right? That would be awesome. But if you guys want to watch that video, I'll leave a link for it in the description uh, for you guys to check out. But from that point, we went on to talk about important gods within Japanese Shinto mythology. And like several other cultures, the sun and the moon is very important. Their names in Japanese lore is Amaterasu and Tsukiyomi. Obviously, fans of Naruto are going to be very familiar with these names. I'm not saying that in the story of One Piece they're going to be called Amaterasu and Tsukiyomi. We already have the sun god Nika. But Naruto and One Piece share the same country of origin. So to rely on the same mythology as incorporated within your story makes sense. So yeah, the sun and the moon parallel Blackbeard and Luffy is very cool. But... In Japanese mythology, there is, it's not Tsukiyomi and Amaterasu, a pair of two gods, it's three. The three together were called the three precious children, and I gave this third god fruit to Emu. Because if there are three god fruits that are held above all else, then the only other character right now that would stand up with Luffy and Blackbeard, in my opinion, is Emu. So with the sun and the moon, I gave Emu the sea and the storms from the god Susano. So now I want to take this theory a little bit further using what we learned in the most recent chapter of One Piece. But let's start with a bit of a tangent, right? There are nine confirmed mythical zones in the entire story. This ranges from Luffy's Nika Nika, Sengoku's Uda, Marco's Phoenix, Kaido's Dragon, among others. But one thing is that is definitively true is not all of these mythical zones are based on creatures that actually lived. Like, we know dragons were a thing, and so it's possible to have a Kaido-like dragon that actually existed sometime in the past, but I think it's pretty unlikely that a literal Buddha ever existed. And this isn't me trying to be biased towards Western culture or anything like that. I'm not saying that Buddhas aren't real for those that practice religions related to this. I'm just saying the way that it's presented in One Piece doesn't seem like something that actually ever really occurred. Or if it did, it doesn't look like that. The dude literally looks like the statue. And I think that this aligns with what Vegapunk tells us about Devil Fruits when Nika appears before him in chapter 1069. All things are brought into this world with hope, even the Devil Fruits. Every Devil Fruit is a possibility for human evolution that someone desired. If only I could be like this, if only I could be like that. All of those powers represent the many branches of the future of humanity. So yeah, Buddha probably did not ever actually exist in the world of One Piece, but it's fitting that 
Somebody within the world of One Piece probably desired or dreamed to become a Buddha. Thus the creation of the fruit. And in this case, its absurd appearance looking like the literal Buddha statue makes a lot more sense. This is how somebody or many people would have visualized a Buddha as a mythical entity. Man, I'm gonna get in so much trouble for this. Why did I choose that example? The Yamato no Orochi was right there. In my personal opinion, there is a 100% chance that every mythical creature mentioned within the story of One Piece exists in devil fruit form. If knowledge of the myth is known in the story of One Piece to some people, then the powers of that being would be desired by somebody. So are there any mentions of mythical creatures within the story of One Piece? Well, yes there is. A very, very important one, actually. All the way back in chapter 19, Shanks tells us this. They say that devil fruits are incarnations of the sea devil. So let's be abundantly clear here, all right? The Hito Hito no Mi, mythical zone devil fruit model, devil of the sea, almost definitely exists. And if it exists, it is obviously a very incredibly strong fruit. Given that this mythical creature is supposedly responsible for creating the devil fruits. I hope this makes sense. Now, whether or not Oda uses it or not is an entirely different question, but I think that he probably would. Because unlike many of the other mythical creatures that Oda has used, this one is very unique to One Piece. On point, on theme, and baked into frickin' devil fruit lore, come on. But yeah, we'll talk more about the Sea Devil's relationship with devil fruits in a moment. There's actually another mention of the Sea Devil in the story, although you kind of have to piece it together on your own. Just before the Thriller Bark arc, the Straw Hats come across a barrel in the sea, which was an offering to the Sea God. That's what it's called in the chapter, Sea God. But the title of the chapter itself is The Devil's Sea. The Straw Hats open the barrel and then almost immediately they're flung into the Florian Triangle, referred to as the Devil's Triangle or the Demon's Triangle. So you can technically separate them. There is a sea god and there is a devil of the sea. These are two different mythical beings, but I prefer the interpretation that this is the same character. Vegapunk actually brings it up as well, and he mentions something very similar to what Shanks tells us in chapter 19, which is that the devil fruits, being unnatural, are loathed by the sea, which he describes as the mother of nature. I find it interesting how almost contradictory these expressions of the sea god are if the sea devil and the sea god are the same it's actually right in line with from japanese mythology susano almost embodying the entire story of one piece and its cast of great characters and great factions susano is on either side of the scale depending on the story that you read and kind of like how we're speculating here susano is this benevolent god of the earth and the sea and storms, while at the same time being a devil-like figure. Both a protector and a destroyer, a hero and a villain. Honestly, the Japanese myths can't seem to make up their mind. I'm not gonna give you the whole story and mythology behind Susano in this video. The long story short here is that Susano was responsible for um, a, a grave tragedy. Due to his actions, the world was cast into darkness, and the sun god Amaterasu went into hiding, which is almost definitely the void century, right? Susano was then banished from heaven and forced to the earth, where it became the guardian of the sea and of Yomi, otherwise known as the land of the dead. In my opinion, there seems to be this contrast between the sea devil and the god of the sea, mainly because the sea appears to reject devil fruits which were created by the sea devil. But I find it much easier to combine the two when thinking about the god like Susano. You can consider eating a devil fruit to be a deal with the devil. The devil just happens to also be the god of the sea. As Susano was banished to earth, he took with him three seeds. From these three seeds, he planted three trees, each with particular properties, although I'm not sure what these properties actually are. But you can see here the possible parallel with One Piece where we have three great trees. We have Adam, we have Eve, and likely we have the tree of the devil or the devil fruit tree. Susano, the god of the sea, is also the guardian of Yomi or the land of the dead. I like to compare this a lot with Davy Jones' Locker, the pirate tale that sailors' souls sink to the bottom of the ocean and collect in Davy Jones' Locker when they die. Basically, hell exists beneath the ocean. 
which is literally true in One Piece with Impel Down. So here's what I'm saying guys, Susano planted three trees, we're saying one of them is the tree of the devil, which means that Susano created the devil fruits hypothetically, which is kind of the same thing that the devil of the sea did. It's also gave a power to the devil fruits, which seems similar to its role as guardian of the land of the dead. It has placed a curse on its fruit to lure people to the underworld, or to death, to literally sink into Davy Jones' locker. Put another way, the depths of the sea is hell. The ruler of hell is the devil, the devil of the sea. This is all based on a comparison of Susano, where Susano wasn't sharing God duties of the sea with somebody else. He was both the guardian of the underworld and the god of the sea, also the storms. So the sea god and the devil of the sea are the same person. The reason that the sea rejects devil fruits is because it is a trap much the same as the barrel that we see just before Thriller Bark. Opening that barrel, like consuming a devil fruit, is the literal pathway to the Devil's Sea, otherwise known as like death, which works well with all the sort of myths surrounding the Florian Triangle and ghosts and brook, etc. I get that we strayed somewhat and it may be unclear as to why I tried to explain this, and honestly it isn't the most important thing other than if you want to get into what Emu's powers are, like specifically. But it should be obvious that I think that Emu's devil fruit, his mythical zone devil fruit, is that of the devil of the sea. And when we see him in the last chapter, specifically we see what appears to be a tale. And this tale, I'm just telling you, I don't know how to prove this. This is a tale of the devil or of a demon. The classic spade shape. So I hope you guys are following. There is a myth within the world of One Piece about the sea devil. Desires, hopes, dreams, wishes make myths into devil fruits. The devil of the sea is, in myth, supposed to be related to the actual creation of the devil fruits, which probably means it's very, very strong. And then Emu shows up and has a tail, which is just how you draw a devil's tail. That is enough for me. It just so happened that we had already speculated that Emu would have a devil fruit related to, in some way, the sea, and thereby Susano. In large part because of the strong rationale which makes Luffy the sun and Blackbeard the moon. I've talked often recently about how the various One Piece arcs and some of the concepts that Oda had within them are going to be related to or shed light on some of the things that happen in-game and also related to the Void Century. But an arc that we don't often talk about is Impel Down. I actually think Impel Down is very related to Emu. Namely, Emu is the devil of the sea or the guardian of hell, and Impel Down is hell, so to speak. Impel Down had six levels. The sixth one, just like Emu, contains prisoners essentially erased from history. Level 5.5 represents the D, the secret joyful level of hell that the prisoners themselves carved out of the prison, holding steady to eventually be able to do something. But yeah, including the demon motif, I just feel as if Impel Down best represents Emu in the story. Impel Down is this kind of dark justice or dark order. It's all about crime, punishment, and brutal control with no oversight. And I think that it would be a fair statement to say that Emu is the warden of the world. That essentially the world is their prison or they have the world in prison. Random theory though, there's a lot of people that believe that at some point in the past, Emu was personality switched with someone else, using the powers of the Opi Opi no Mi. Essentially, the Emu that we see now is not the real one. And Doflamingo's plan to seize true power in the world was actually executed sometime before him by somebody else. And coincidence or not, there's a lot of stolen identity tropes within the Impel Down arc. Namely, Mr. Two Bond Clay has the ability to transform their appearance and use that. So just food for thought. But as a side note, we see the Gorosei in silhouette form here, and I like to believe that they have their own devil fruits, own mythical devil fruits. But as we see them in just shadow form, you have something like a chicken, you have something like a rhino or an elephant, and a bull, which is oddly reminiscent of some of the jailers of Impel Down. Perhaps furthering the connection between Emu and Hell. But anyway, guys, I struggled to sort of encapsulate this video. But if I were to take a stab at it, I just think that certain arcs, uh, not just by themselves, but in combination with others kind of scattered around, prepares us and foreshadows future events, characters, plot threads, ideas, all of that. And I think the arcs in which Oda had Emu in mind as being related are Thriller Bark and Impel Down. We've talked extensively about Impel Down being the literal hell within the world of One Piece, 
but Thriller Bark is treated in much the same way as a sort of gateway to the land of the dead, and it's no coincidence that this is where Brooke died, and also where he returned and stayed in this purgatory state for 50 years. A place that happens to have no light, while Emu in the story is erasing lights. It's also a place where sailors and vessels enter, but never leave. Essentially, they are erased, like the Void Century. Do you see how Oda captures this in a very subtle way with Laboon? Laboon is waiting 50 years for the return of the Rumbar Pirates because they're gone, and he doesn't know what happened to them. They literally entered the Void. Even to the dynamics of the Powers Man, Moria's ability in Thriller Bark was to take people's shadows and give them to zombies. But the, one of the driving conflicts of the arc was that the shadows possessed their own wills, which Moria's powers, or Moria himself, was attempting to subdue. To me, this seems very fitting for Emu, who's trying to manipulate and control both desire and will. This conflict is mainly manifest between Emu, the leader, and his soldiers, the marines, like Gekko Moria's leader and the zombies are his soldiers. And Moria was also the main arc in which Luffy utilized the powers of his enemy against him, which is undoubtedly going to happen with Emu and the world government. What they've been doing across the world for the last 800 years will be the reason why they fall. So in a somewhat twisted sense, Nightmare Luffy represents the inherited will. Which is likely why Oda chose the word Nightmare as a foil to dream. And also fitting here is the end of the arc. Moria was forced to stay within the Florian Triangle because Light was the enemy to his empire. What ultimately defeated him was the Light of the Dawn. We could actually talk a lot about this if we wanted to. I'm not going to because I feel like I've gone too far off track, but there's a lot of really cool things here. Anyway, guys, that's pretty much the theory. I really like this idea of three god fruits in One Piece. The sun god, Nika, the moon god, which is Blackbeard's fruit, secretly probably erased from history, just the same as Nika. And then your third sea god related to Susno in Japanese mythology, but more tailored to the One Piece world like Nika, in this case, the Sea Devil, or the Devil of the Sea. And if you ask me to predict Emu's powers, I would say that it probably has something to do with death. Death and souls, but different than how we've seen with Brooke and with Big Mom. The connection between Emu and the concept of Void makes me wonder whether, kind of like Sugar's Devil Fruit, Emu can erase someone's existence trap and imprison people's souls such that nobody can remember them. And again, coincidence or not, you guys decide, Sugar also has this weird side effect of a fruit where she remains childlike forever, which is kind of like perpetual youth, I'm just saying. It's also very intriguing to me that Sugar wears a crown, which could be similar to Emu's crown, is definitely similar to the crown seen in the flag of Impel Down. And honestly, right now I found out that Archer beat me to this video and we're saying a lot of different things. So I'm cool still with uploading this. But one point that he brought up that I never would have is that Emu kind of talks like a child. Oda literally does this shit for a living. And I'm sitting here researching the video and blowing my own mind, right? But like, this is what he would do. In my mind, I visualize this as a sort of container in which Emu puts the souls of those that he wants to disappear or have their light removed. And in a sense, I think of it like Davy Jones' locker. Recently in the story, Oda created a new mystery. This mystery room, the phantom room. The word phantom means something very similar to ghost. And I believe that the phantom room holds the souls of those that Emu has erased. I also think that it's these souls which go on to form new devil fruits, removed from the cycle of life and death, a kind of purgatory. I don't want to open myself a whole new can of worms here, but I've liked the thought, and you can again watch the video linked in the description, I've liked the thought that Luffy's Nika fruit, Blackbeard's Moon God fruit, and the God of the Sea fruit are the three original devil fruits. Perhaps they all began as real gods within the lore of One Piece. One is heavily associated with dreams, the other heavily associated with nightmares, and one does not sleep at all. The moon is eternally unsatisfied and represents the desires that never come to be. Because when the dawn arrives, the moon fades away. And with Nika's central ability seemingly related to the power of imagination, I'd like to think that Nika, the god Nika, trapped the other two gods along with itself. 
but the rest of the devil fruits are all spawned from the abilities of the god of the sea. So essentially One Piece is this long repeating story of gods needing to be defeated. And at the forefront has always been the warrior of liberation, the sun god Nika. But yeah guys, that's pretty much the theory. As always curious as to what you think, leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Remember to check out my book, The Booms, volume one and two is out. Links in the description as well as pinned in the comments. And if you guys read it, please leave a review to let other people know what you think about it. Like the video, subscribe, click the bell to be notified, join the squad. And as always guys, have a wonderful day.